Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, bringing you the next part in Chapter 3 of this Dead Space 2 video walkthrough on Zealot difficulty. So once you've got out of the lift, you're going to be back into a, a, resi a residential looking area. And there's a shit ton of candles everywhere, and there's that sneaky bastard laid down thinking we can't see him. But we have. Don't throw heads at him, it doesn't do much. Just um, take his limbs out and finish him off. And yeah, this place is um, held pretty firmly by these cultists, these unitolo unitology, is it? Which is the religion of the marker. And these things here, I hate these fucking things. They were on the first game, and on Impossible, if these got on you, you were dead. On this game, they seem to have toned them down massively, and you can stasis them, and throwing the environment at them will kill them. Anything touches them, it's an instant kill. The only problem is, whenever they show up, you can never grab a good and throw at him because they're, they're a fucking nuisance. So, if you have time to throw stuff at them, do it because it'll save you ammo. If you don't, just shoot them. Stasis them and stomp them, that's pretty good. If you don't have status, you'll have to shoot. Stasis, not status, goddammit. But yeah, they're pointless, they're annoying, and they're back. So, as you can see, I'm looking around, I see the cardboard box. I throw the cardboard box. It gets one. One dude! There's like 20 dudes there. Come on, box. So uh, <laughs> I'm throwing around that Poundland box and it's doing fuck all. So I just have to do it the old-fashioned way. But um, now they're dead. There's generally not too much in these rooms enemy-wise. It's just um, checking them for ammo and stomping bodies and doing your thing. <clears throat> Excuse me, once again. Uh, yeah, and then you walk into to you see that is a an example of a body that's fully intact. If you see a room full of them, behead the motherfuckers because you're gonna get one of those crazy looking bat face rapists that turn up and turn them into necromorphs, and you don't want that. So here we go with a, another hallucination in this god awful looking nursery. And as you can see, she's about as intimidating as uh, a curly turd. She's. She just doesn't do much for me. In fact, every single one of these hallucinations, the only ones I thought were any good were the ones later on when you go back to some familiar, ter familiar territory, but I'll not ruin what that is. <clears throat> Excuse me, god damn it. And then come into these rooms, pick up all the shit you can, and then um, follow your waypoint marker to the next section. And you'll notice I run back here because I see that door there, and when I stand near it, I realise it's the door I came in. <laughs> so, run all the way back to the nursery, and then carry on from there, because that's the way forward. And I'm just needlessly vandalising the crib because I'm one of those kind of guys. And just cruise in here, so we have to go through that door, so I go the opposite way every time to try and find ammunition and anything that can help me. And this time, I don't think it pays off. Oh, maybe it does. We've got a stasis module, which are really useful. And that room down there is a room where there's going to be an infector and a ton of bodies. Unfortunately, I don't handle it very well because I get bum rushed. So you're going to see the first real challenge to, to my life because I get dicked. But um, I can tell you what I did wrong and hopefully you won't make that mistake. So make your way across here. It's probably going to be... Oh, nice bit of ammo there in the green boxes. There we go, monster closet. It's a standard necromorph. Take his leg out, take his arm out. Stomp him. And he drops some javelin ammo, but my inventory's full. And it's pissing me off. And look at that. Why the fuck do I have a line gun rack when I don't own a line gun? How would that ever benefit me? I'd stand more chance throwing candles. Oh, it's just frustrating. Especially when I'm running around with five bullets in my javelin and ten bullets in my plasma coat. But I've got two line racks because that's going to help in a bloody fix. So carry on around here anyway. And when you go down the elevator, that's when you go into that little arena below you. And one thing that's making this guide kind of interesting is it's happening different to when I first played it. And I mentioned this on my demo, If I don't know if any of you guys saw that. I've played that demo four times and each time something different happened and I'm having that problem on this because this next room I killed everything in it with very little problem managed it dead perfectly and that's when I didn't know what was coming I knew what was coming on this run and I got fucking dicked so the first thing I do because I know there's those those douchebags turning up is their bodies over there I pick a chair up by accident fuck off chair god damn it chair go away and then um 
I grab that. Oh, wine! God damn it! Go on. There we go. I grab him. I move him over here, and then I stamp his head off. Well, I stamp his arm off and I miss, and then I get the head, and then I take a leg off ju just for good measure. And then there's another one there, so I grab him, and then I stamp him. And then there's another one to your right, and uh, that's probably the only one you're going to be able to grab before this battle kicks off. Because do you see the double statues on my right there? Behind those two statues, on my, on, like over Isaac's left shoulder now, is where the enemies spawn. And then the doorway you can see down there where I fired that fucking... <laughs> all that crap I'm picking up. Two pukers are going to spawn there. And um, they're pretty standard, they're not too bad. The problem is, there's more of the bat things that turn up. And um, where I'm standing now, there's going to be some of the, the twin scythe guys, the big bladed arm dudes. And a bat, and I take on the the, the necromos normally, but one of these bats sneaks up on me, and it fucks me up, and it it's, it's not cool. So there you go, there's your spitter. When you kill him, a, a second necromorph spawns, another spitter. So kill that one, and just be careful now because there's something going to spawn behind you. So they've been taken out, nice and simple. There we go. There's a spawn over there. I know he's just landed. Another guy spawns there. I see him. Take him out. This is all pretty standard. And right now, when I'm trying to pick up his, his arm, I see his mate, another puker spawns. Oh no, it's a bat, and I stasis him, and this bat gets me when I'm reloading. And look at that, if I'd have reloaded quicker, been able to stop that necromorph, I wouldn't have had this problem, but when they grab you, they will take all your life, it's utter bullshit. But luckily enough, the grab move kills the bats, so he's, he's out of commission and I can finish off his friend. But yeah, that was way too close. Uh, the best thing I can say is, when you go down where the pukers are, don't mess about on their bodies. Just load your gun, spin round, take that one out with your javelin, knock him away, and then get ready for the second one that swings round, and hopefully the bat won't catch you off guard. But that went pretty bad. And um, I used two med packs to get my life up, so as you can see, med packs do fuck all on this difficulty. But yeah, that was kind of messy. But... um. Just collect everything you can in the room, try and get your ammo back to what it was. And just just be aware that there's going to be a few encounters that are similar to this. And there's an encounter in an area that's identical to this one later on. And it's a bastard, so I'll speak about that when we get there. But once you open this door, there's going to be the introduction of the gunship. And you're going to go into a zero gravity room. Yeah. Where, where there's no oxygen and you have to carry on. But there's no enemies, there's nothing to really worry about. You just have to push on, open a door... And that is literally the end of chapter 3. So up here we go. You'll see the gunfire. Smash the window. There we go. You can see the oxygen on his back. We know we have to move. She tells us to get into the church. You're not in any real threat here if you stand about other than suffocating. And then just carry on through this door. So thanks for watching my guide guys and you take care now.